Hello, everybody. I'm Jims McMahon, and with me is Gorilla Mezzo. Hello, hello. We are back again. We've got more leaks than no one else on the internet has. You can only find them right here. Jims McMahon, let's walk through the basic skills of Blood Bowl 2020. We'll see some new skills, some changes to some old ones, and some that stayed exactly the same. <laughs> yes, Block is is uh, is the first one. General, these are just not necessarily all of the general skills, but it ends on wrestle, so it probably is. <laughs> um, it starts with Block, exactly the same as it used to be. Brilliant. Um, Dauntless is gonna be exactly the same as it used to be <laughs> right. what's yeah. interesting about the dauntless is this is very interesting before before in the previous editions they had block in with a lowercase b and block with a capital b and a capital b referred to a block action and a lowercase b referred to a block you know that could be part of a block action or as part of a blitz action now they clearly say a block action on its own or as part of a blitz action so that's really weird. So no longer do you just take one action per turn, you know, like per player per turn. You you can it's actually a block action and a, you make a blitz action and a block action as part of that blitz action, which is really really weird wording. I do not really particularly like that change, but that that is that is a change that's been made. There you go, and it it it's semi important, I guess. But uh, you know, it's just I guess it's just definitions but it's pretty weird yeah it seems like it's just one of those qualifiers that makes things easier for them in terms of laying them out for people who are not maybe as familiar with the game as you know 99.9 percent .9 of the people who are going to buy the box set yeah but it, it's just really weird because it says see dauntless it says when it performs a block action on its own or as part of a blitz action but block it just says it when it's applied during a block action so it's like does that not work then? Is it if it's used as if that block action is part of a blitz oh, action? Oh yeah, not that's block? really weird. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they changed something to the blitz action. I I can't imagine what unless it ended your movement after the hit or something like that. Yeah, it seems but really I, I, weird. I to, yeah, really yeah, that weird. is weird. Or it could just be that this book isn't perfectly edited yet. Yeah, yeah, I think that's more likely. But it, it just seems weird to add that in and then not have have it sometimes, but not all the time. But I'm sure block will work on blitzers. <laughs> yeah. um, right, dirty player plus one. So yeah, the fact that this is, it says when it commits a foul action, armor or injury made against the victim may be modified by the amount shown in brackets. So, yeah, that heavily implies that we're going to see plus two, plus three... Yeah. Plus something else, which we don't know if you can take the skill multiple times to bump that up, or maybe it's just a thing for star players. Like maybe, you know, some star player will have a plus two dirty player now instead. But yeah, or the death um, roller, perhaps, if it's just grinding on yep. people. <laughs> or maybe that's how the. Uh, no, we have the chainsaw rule available to us, and it didn't change how they worded that, I don't think. No, no. Well, it doesn't give them like dirty, dirty player it? plus three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Very no, interesting. Didn't. Yeah, very interesting. We'll have to see. You know, I think a lot of people out there are really kind of, kind of, kind of hoping that you could stack dirty player. I don't know that I want to see that no, personally. No. But, but <laughs> if they did, that would change how we look at fouling for certain. Absolutely, yeah. At the very least, it opens design space, doesn't it? Same with a Mighty Blow plus yeah. one. You can reasonably assume that because Dirty Player is like this, Mighty Blow will be the same. Um, so Fend is exactly the same as it. See, now this is interesting, isn't it? If the player's pushed back as a result of any block dice result being applied against them. Like, not mentioning the block. Like, it's weird, isn't it? It's so weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something written it's either terrible writing or there's something written into blitz actions that is incredibly mundane and pointless but they wrote themselves into a corner for how they define all their skills and that's forcing them to then have to change these weird wordings yeah and also fend here actually mentions that the people that mentioned gfi being changed to rushing 
Well, I had only seen it referred to in the in the Fnatic rules, and I thought, you know, everyone else could go for it and Fnatic's could rush. But quite clearly here it says um, they may continue to move as part of a blitz action if they have movement allowance remaining or by rushing. So rushing is definitely, GFI is definitely being renamed to rushing. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, this skill cannot be used against or against a player with a juggernaut skill that performed the block as part of a blitz. So yeah, okay. Um, friend, so Wrestle doesn't have to have that because that works if they've got juggernaut on a block, doesn't it? Wrestle. Or is, is juggernaut only, does juggernaut only cancel Wrestle on a blitz? Uh, I thought it did. Yeah, I think juggernaut only triggers on a blitz, doesn't it? Yeah, well Wrestle is not worded like that. Wrestle just has... This player may use the skill when a both down result is applied, either when they perform a block action or when they are the target of a block action. Instead of applying the both down result as normal, and regardless of any other skills, either player may possess both players of place prone. So that looks like Juggernaut doesn't can cancel wrestle anymore. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. So back up to Frenzy. Um, I think this is exactly the same. They've got to follow up and they've got to block them again. Um... And it's just really weird, like, if this player is performing a blitz action, performing a second block action, it's like, wow. So now you can make three actions with one player, a blitz action and two block actions? Or, like, it, does a blitz action have a move action, then a block action, then another move action? Like, it's so yeah. weird. I'm really curious to see what they did to blitz. I don't think they changed anything, game, like, in-game-wise. I think they just changed how they worded something. And they've yeah. just caused this chain result of having to define everything really oddly. Yeah, really weird. Um, and there you go, they must rush to do so, and if they cannot rush, they cannot do that. So yeah, rushing is definitely, go for it's renamed to rushing. Um, kick, you can halve the result of the D6 um, rounding down. Okay, so that's the same as it used to be, right? It's just yeah. that they haven't made it as specific. Because if you have one, you round down, don't you, to zero. So it's the same as it was. Mm -hmm. They've just made it take up less space. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, oh, this is an actual huge change here to pro. Yeah, absolutely. I was just reading that. Damn. Absolutely massive. Not only is it a three plus to use it instead of a four plus, you only reroll one dice. So this is going to make absolutely zero risk greed promo rolls on blocks isn't it you know if you roll a push and a both down you can quite happily re-roll that both down knowing that yeah. you can take the push so i think vampires are going to be pretty happy with that change yeah exactly vampires are the big ones to take pro anyway even on a four plus and now they're getting a three plus that just absolutely makes them better however if they can't pass they're going to be a lot worse because <laughs> they're already <laughs> yeah, slow true. aren't they so that's It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting if vampires can just pass as well as dodge. That'll be good. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, if whether they use whether the one dice is used as a single roll or as part of a multiple dice roll or as part of a dice pool, um, but can't be armor or injury or casualty. So that's I mean that's obviously the same, but that's really interesting, isn't it? That you can just pick out one dice, so you're always going to have. Um, like you can always safely greed. You'll never do roll a roll a push, re-roll it into double skulls. That will never happen with pro. So that alone makes pro a lot better. Yep, and yeah, and on a three plus, like yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, three plus for everything else is is really nice, isn't it? Um, shadowing has been nerfed massively. Um, <laughs> but it was already so powerful, Jim. <laughs> yeah, of course. When creating a new edition of Blood Bowl, your main concerns should be nerfing throwing and nerfing shadowing. That's really weird. Really, really weird decisions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, now it's you roll a d6, add your movement, take away their movement, um, and you need a you need a six like. It's just so weird. It's so weird because a tree can shadow a gutter runner as well as a gutter runner can shadow a gutter runner. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just weird, isn't it? Like it, it's it's really weird and it's also really bad. So yeah, shadowing awful now. Um strip ball, this looks like exactly the same. 
Yep, exactly the same. Sure hands. Same thing with same thing with that blitz wording again on strip ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A block action on its own or as part of a blitz action. Um, and then tackle. Marked by one of the players with this skill. Can it use dodge? Exactly the same. When it's targeted by a block action performed by a player with this skill, the player cannot use the dodge skill if a stumble is applied against them. So it tackles exactly the same. And wrestle looks like it's not counted by Juggernaut anymore. So there you go. There's that page. Next up, we've got mutations. Jim, big hand is up first. Yeah, and so that was every... We can see here, this is page number 79, so that was every general skill. I mean, obviously you would think so, ending in wrestle, but it definitely was. This is every mutation skill. Uh, big hand is exactly the same as it used to be. Claws has been nerfed in that you cannot combine it with mighty blow to break armor, um, or anything in fact. Any modifiers you can you need an eight plus, so it's like armor seven, right? In the old rules, um, again, it does say p the result of a block action, but it doesn't say whether performed as part of a blitz action. But maybe it doesn't need to. Who knows? It sure looks like when you blitz, you perform a block action as well. So it looks like you can use it on blitzers. I imagine you definitely can use block and wrestle and claws on blit on blitzers as well as blocks. Um, so, Jim, can I ask a question? Am I reading claws wrong, or does claws make halflings better if you hit them? Um, no, the because uh, roll of <laughs> because you're still breaking them on. You, you're using both, right? If you roll a seven, if you roll a seven against halflings, you're hitting the seven plus, aren't you? Um, so you don't need that part of claws. If you see what I mean. Half but it technically, are... technically, it seems the way I read. It, I mean, again, I I agree that that's what the rule is. But just the way it's written, the way I read it is, it just ignores everything and it makes it an A plus. No, no, I would not. I would. I disagree. I I think. I mean, I again, I know that that's not the rule. I'm yeah. just like the way it's written. It just sounds dumb to me. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. But I think it. I think it doesn't need to be written like. Undumb. <laughs> okay, fair. An A plus unless it's better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Extra arms is exactly the same. Um, disturbing presence is... This has got a star. Oh, yeah. And just like Frenzy had on the previous page, Disturbing presence and Foul Appearance have stars, which um, will almost certainly mean you they are not optional, right? Because Frenzies has never been optional. Um, disturbing presence is not optional. And foul appearances, is, is, they, they've never been optional. So that's de almost certainly. I mean, you can't say definitely because we don't have the information, but almost certainly that's what the star means, that these are, are not optional. Um, that's exactly the same as it's always been, uh, disturbing presence. And foul appearance, uh, block or as part of a blitz, <laughs> <laughs> or as a special action. So it still works on stabs. I mean, it didn't really need to be, but it's good that they've done that, I guess, but it, they could have done it as part of stab and chains. All right. Um, but they've done it as part of foul appearance. Um, and yeah, on a roll of one, they can't, so that's not changed. Uh, horns, you do that this is applied be plus one when you blitz before counting assists or dauntless or anything so exactly the same as it was in blood ball 2016 so the most skills unchanged only claws nerfed iron hard skin um claws cannot be used against this player is gonna be it's gonna be interesting if anybody starts with that like maybe orcs or something but black orcs don't have it and dwarves don't have it we can see from the uh what we've seen so far so Maybe, maybe like bull centaurs could have it. Maybe lizard men could have it if they want to really make them overpowered. But it looks like nobody's I mean, going to start with you're it. You're probably only going to see it on mutation access teams, though. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's going to start with it, uh, which means no one's yeah. going to take it because it's rubbish. <laughs> um, right, monstrous mouth. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Like, you wouldn't want to spend a double on it. But it would be kind of cool for gutter runners because they're getting the strip, they're getting the protection against strip ball while still being a handoff option rather than the sure hands. Like like it's interesting. I think that's actually pretty interesting for Skaven. But the fact that it would cost a double and sure hands wouldn't means that it will never ever be taken. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, tail now works on leaps and also 
and then you can see it says dodge jump or leap so that's very interesting isn't it that implies that you can jump um it's also applied in very long legs as well actually so now any player it looks like can jump um over prone players so that's interesting um there's an additional minus one but it does not stack anymore it doesn't matter if you mark with 10 by by like six of those players it'll still just be a minus one um so they've nerfed it a bit by not stacking with other tails but the fact that it works on leaps is nice and this new jumping thing so let's look at very long legs this player may reduce any negative modifier applied to the agility test when they attempt to jump over a prone or stunned player or to leap over an empty square or a square occupied by a standing player if this player has the leap skill by one to a minimum of minus one. Additionally, this player may apply a two plus modifier to any attempts to interfere with a pass they make. And finally, they ignore this rubbish skill that nobody will take. Uh, sorry, Cloudburster. So, so yeah, very long legs. <laughs> That's that that shows that clearly that every person will be able to jump over a prone or stun player now. Oh, that sounds like a trap to me though, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but it does mean that, you know, like your path to the end zone will not be blocked by people, you know, stunned yeah. that you can't get over. Yeah. So like that's gonna be interesting, you know, a lot of the time you want you know, you'd have to block for a removal, right, to clear your way. Whereas now, at least you could jump over that with any player. But I, but I wonder what that role is going to be. Arguably, it should be easier than a leap, and I assume a leap is still just going to be an edge roll. Yeah, weird, isn't it? So is it effectively? It's just almost always got to be a two plus. But then what? You know, what's the point? Like maybe it's going to be harder than a leap because. But uh, then maybe, how could but it be? if it's harder than a leap, would you ever try it? Well, Unless you, I mean, if you had to, yeah. Yeah, and then maybe you could get, like, say, a plus two if you've got the leap skill, so that leap players can then jump over players, no yeah. problem. Who knows? Who knows what it's going to be, but definitely everybody will be able to jump over prone or stunned players. Uh, two heads is exactly the same as it was, which is pretty great. Tentacles is, is subtly different. Um, you roll a d6, adding the strength. Of, well... This player uses it, and that player rolls the dice. The player with tentacles rolls the dice, which is crucial because it is, on the face of it, worse than it used to be. Um, you roll a d6, adding the strength of this player and subtracting the strength of the opponent, and you need six or more to hold them. So it is slightly worse, but the fact that they cannot re-roll it because you're rolling the dice, not them, they cannot re-roll your dice. Um, the yeah. fact that the tentacles player is rolling the dice means that it is actually, when it's crucial it's going to hold more than it used to. Um, but if they commit a re-roll, then it's... Like, if they don't want to commit a re-roll, then it's going to hold less. But if, they, if they're if willing to commit a re-roll, it's going to hold more. So that, that's pretty interesting for tentacles. I think. Yep. A side grade for tentacles. <laughs> yep. Right, now All right, the... and now, here we go. The passing skills following the long trend of... Why is passing getting this much attention? All sorts of stuff going on in this section, Jim. Oh, yeah, I'm so hyped. Look how brilliant this is. Accurate is now half as good. <laughs> Great. I'll never take it. Cannoneer is now half as good as accurate. I'll never take it. Was Cannoneer ever a skill? Oh, is it Hail Mary? No. They've, they've split accurate in two. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Awful. <laughs> Thank you for for explaining that for me and the audience. That's what I was uh, confused for. I was trying to get clarity for them, not me. Yes, exactly. There you go. So that they split accurate in half. They've also split safe throw in half. Um, they've got cloud burster. They've actually split into quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Only on a long pass or a long bomb, you can choose to make the opposing coach re-roll their attempted interception. Brilliant or interference. And then safe pass, if they fumble a pass, the ball is not dropped and it doesn't it doesn't scatter and it's not a turnover. So they've split safe throw into one and a half. Yeah, the, the only thing I'll say is we don't really know exactly what the interference rule is, correct? Yes, correct, yeah. So if that is again again, this all is under the umbrella of should you really be passing right now anyway? But um, it, depending on how effective interference is as a as a, uh, a no, it's not a skill it's just an action 
that anyone seemingly can take. We'll have to find out. Uh, maybe some value gets added into having Cloudburster, but certainly not more than having both that and Safe Pass under one skill. Previously. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. I mean, some people might start with it, but nobody should ever take it, in my opinion. <laughs> Dump off is exactly the same as it currently is. Um, so, yeah. That's All it. right. Now, let's talk about the fumble, Ruski. <laughs> yeah, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do, Jim. Yes, we do. It's... I Okay, why don't you give us a summary of it? Okay, yeah. So, when this player performs a move or blitz action, whilst in possession of the ball, they may choose to drop the ball. The ball may be placed in any square the player vacates during their movement and does not bounce. No turnover is caused. Okay. On on its, you know, uh, you know, just just right up front, it doesn't seem great to be putting the ball on the ground. Uh, mm. but give me one use case that you could see this skill being useful. I'll give you two. Um, All right. on what in one case, the halfling hefty can take it as a skill and then he can pick up the ball run forward with a move action and then drop it so you know you could put you both both hefties could have it i guess put them in the corners um so that if the if the, if you get a really deep kick they can get it run forward drop it and then somebody else can get it and hand it off to a halfling for the pass um for like the throw teammate so that's sometime you could use it however you would of course take leader first and on the ball first but after those two skills Maybe you could take it. Also, if you had a, if you had like, say, for example, you had a gutter runner that had two players marking him, and you had a thrower, um, rather than passing him and you know, rather than passing it to him, and maybe they've got an on the ball player who's agility five, right? <laughs> rather than passing it and getting intercepted, um, or him just failing the catch, you could run up next to him, drop it, and then he could dodge out, pick it up, and run away. Well, those uh, actually sound pretty useful, but how often do you think any of those situations will come into play, Jim? Certainly never, ever, ever enough to ever take this skill, ever. <laughs> yeah, that's about where I am. I actually do kind of like the idea of the skill, but it's just never going to get used. I would like it if you could do it without the skill, but I yeah, hate the idea yeah, of dedicating sure, sure. a skill to it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Hail Mary Pass. This looks exactly the same as it used to be. Um, okay, yeah, that looks exactly the exactly the same. Oh no, wait. Hmm. The range rule is not used, so that looks like this doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> a passing ability test is made and can be re-rolled as normal. Also, you're affected by tackle zones. You're affected by that's, tackle zones on Hail Mary pass person. now. So, like, you'll, you'll get the minuses from tackle zones, so you, you'll be more likely to fumble or throw it wildly and accurately. So, that's interesting, isn't it? It seems like uh, not, not a great change. No, no, they've made they've made it worse. Brilliant, you know, gotta 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 keep that passing down. A skill a skill that you would only ever take for a meme now is a bad bad meme. <laughs> yep, nerves of steel just the same as it was. Safe leader pass is the same, right? Yeah, nerves of steel just the same. Uh, pass no just leader, the same. I said leader. Oh, leader, yeah, your leader is the yeah leader's the same. Yeah, um, yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So these are the two interesting ones, though. We've got two interesting yep. ones we're left. First of all, running pass is terrible. <laughs> if this player performs a quick pass action, the activation does not have to end once the pass is resolved. If you wish, and if this player has not used their full movement allowing, they may continue to move after resolving the pass. Why didn't they hand off then? <laughs> right? Yeah, well... <laughs> Why and if if it was already a quick pass, if it wasn't a quick pass, well, no, it's, it can only be done up after a quick pass. So, it's just nonsensical. <laughs> I mean, the, the yeah, the only thing I could think of is like it just helps you make the pass and then set up the screen. Yeah. But like, if you're passing to a guy. You probably want that screen up and running before you make the pass. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like awful. 
Yeah. So there you go. And this... someday, somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to win a game by fumble rooskying over to someone else who makes a running pass. I don't think they will. <laughs> Someone somehow will, Jim, at some point. I just, in their it, the running pass career. doesn't add any value. Like, at least the fumble <laughs> ruski adds value. The running yeah. pass is just nonsense. Completely nonsense, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I, I got nothing. I can't think of. The only thing I can think of is, like, yeah, it's just like being able to pass the ball to safety. And then move back and be an assist for someone else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Given an assist. Movement. Yeah. Yeah. You could okay. do it with a gutter rudder with the, with you know that nine movement of theirs. They could move up, quick pass it on a five or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> and then rush back and uh and 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 add a uh and add a uh, uh an assist for a block. That's about the only thing. Certainly not a skill I would ever pay for. But yeah. we did see some players that were like movement five come with it <laughs> yeah the imperial the imperial thrower isn't he? he's movement six but he's only got three oh plus he's passing. movement six okay yeah okay but, but he's only three plus a passing instead of two plus like a human yeah um, but this is actually a good skill here on the ball i've been saying this for years this is what they should do they have combined kickoff return and pass block um they can move up to three squares when the opposing coach declares they can make a pass action and then blah 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 it's just like how it used to be uh, how kick off, uh, how pass block used to be, and additionally start a drive. Um, they can move three squares, you know, just like how kick off returns. So it is just kick off return plus plus that, and that is brilliant. So they've been doing something that I've been saying for ages, right? Combine two rubbish skills into one somewhat useful skill. Brilliant, but at the same time. <laughs> They've split safe throw and they've split accurate. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, Jim, you heard it here first. Jim, Jim, Jimmy Fantastic, inventor of On the Ball, your <laughs> passing skill upgrade of the 2020, the winner of the 2020 <laughs> Blood Bowl release. Best skill confirmed. Oh, yeah. All right, and now we come to our final two skills that we have access to. Uh, Ball and Chain and Bombardier, two uh, favorites of the stunty world. Jim, any changes here? Uh, yes, first of all, they are traits now. They are no longer extraordinary skills. They have now become traits. You can tell from what page number they're on. Um, Ball and Chain, you cannot choose to not use uh, because it's got this star here. Um and this is pretty much unchanged. I'm pretty certain this is unchanged apart from uh, the rush instead of GFI wording and probably minor wording, but it looks ex pretty much exactly the same um, as it used to be. Bombardier, however, is has got a lot better, actually. A, a lot better. Um, before, if, you, if a bomb was caught, they would have to throw it immediately. Now, on a 4+, plus, it explodes immediately. So you can you can quite happily throw it at people, knowing that even if they catch it, it might still go off. So that that's really much better to target opposing players now, yeah. um, especially ones that aren't very good at catching, <laughs> of course, <laughs> because you know they are in tackle zones or whatever. So that that's really, but that's that's a lot better that it might explode immediately. And in the massive, the absolutely massive change to it is. Um, you may apply a plus one modifier to either the armor or the injury roll. So that is just... And it's May, so it's selective Mighty Blow, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So when it hits your players, <laughs> it doesn't have Mighty Blow. <laughs> but when it hits your opponent's players, it does have Mighty Blow. That's really weird, isn't it? Yeah, very interesting. And so now, though, the, uh, the argument that's going to come up, even though it seems pretty clear to me, is that... If you throw a bomb at me and I catch it and I throw it at you and it hits and explodes, you're still the one because it's your bomb who gets to decide where that modifier goes. Yeah. I assume. Yeah, that's it seems that way, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, roll a D six for each player from either team that occupies a square adjacent. Yeah. An arm roll is made against them. Interesting, isn't it? You may apply, not <laughs> Not the person rolling the dice. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe that'll be a right to make it clear that the person 
trying to hurt them rolls the dice. Right. Um, but at the moment, it looks like you, like the guy throwing the bomb, or the guy who owns the bombardier, because it's the, it's under the bombardier skill, and it says you. In the bombardier section, it looks like you roll for both players, and you're gonna get a plus one on them and not on yourself unless you're fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I think that's a. I, I like this change. Again, I'm not really a stunty player, but you know, lobbing bombs is always one of the fun hallmarks of just kind of like kicking back, old school blood bowl style, being crazy. So uh, seeing those bombs be uh, a pretty strong strategic choice for a goblin team, uh, more so than they have already been in the past. Uh, uh, I welcome it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Bombs have been historically pretty bad for goblins. Uh, pretty good for for uh, what's it called boomer, but now they, they can be absolutely devastating. Now with mighty blow, that's going to be really good. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so that's all the skills. Um, there's also some pictures of teams. So would you like to look at those two, gorilla? Uh, would I, Jim? Let's get let's get looking at some new minis. All right. Well, we're getting a first look here at the Wolfenberg Crypt Steelers, probably a necromantic team. Uh, one thing I will point out, first of all, that ghoul runner with the pumpkin head is outstanding. Uh, I also really like that flesh golem, one of the better flesh golem models I've seen. Don't like the werewolf at all, though. That's just my personal preference, though. Uh, but I will note, necromantic getting in the rule book means that maybe we don't have to live the life of 15 appendices huh jim what do you think <laughs> i think we still will because... yeah i think we do too i'm I, it's wishful thinking but that's not a team i would have thought would have made the first cut in the in the rule book no no exactly it must just literally be because they've got the, the models on the way pretty soon um yeah and it's not really telling that whites aren't on here because, uh, you know, the Goblin team, for example, only has linemen um, on the pictures. So so it doesn't really mean anything that whites aren't on here. It doesn't have anything to do with the sprues or anything. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree. I think the ghoul looks amazing with a pumpkin head, and I really yeah. like the flesh golem, and I really dislike the werewolf. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that werewolf. All the zombies are fine, but yeah. they're zombies. But like, yeah, I actually the pose on the flesh golem is very blood bully. I like it. Yeah. Well, I think that is all that we have for spoilers from not WWE from <laughs> Blood Bowl 2020. My name is Gorilla Metzo. I am so happy to break this here first on the internet. No one possibly could have gotten this information out any sooner or more accurate. Thank you so much, Jims, for having me, as always. <laughs> Thanks very much, Gorilla Metzo. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>